everyone knew we were starting a new way of life when we stepped off the bus that transported us to our new basic training company. After the few days we spent at the reception battalion, we thought we knew all there was to know about the Army. But we quickly realized how wrong we were about that. The drill sergeants really kept us in line while we collected our baggage, and we knew for sure who was in charge. The next eight weeks of training would be difficult, but by following the instructions of our drill sergeants, we knew we could make it. The company area was going to be our whole world for the next two months. and defensive maneuvers were taught at bayonet training. Butt stroke, slash, smash, thrust, and withdraw were all commands we needed to remember to be successful at the bayonet assault course.
Pugil Stick training enhanced our bayonet skills. The Pugil Sticks were used as if it were a bayonet on a rifle. The drill sergeants were there to referee the matches and to ensure a fair bout. This competition was the motivation needed to get through the remainder of basic training. Reacting properly to the dangers of nuclear, biological, and chemical attacks was the main focus of NBC training. Putting on the M40A1 protective mask and entering the chamber, then feeling the effects of the CS gas made us realize what a real attack could be and how we would have to prepare for it. We only spent two minutes in the chamber, but it seemed much longer once we got the full effects of the gas when the protective seals on the mask were broken. Before exiting the chamber, all the gas had to be cleared from the mask and the mask resealed. Even the drill sergeants in the area suffered the effects of the gas when the chamber doors were opened. Walking into the wind helped remove the gas from our clothing. This was one event no one wanted to repeat, and the smell of the gas is one you never forget.
During drill and ceremony, we were instructed in the basics of stationary and marching movements. We were also taught the manual of arms with the M16 rifle. We could do right face and left face without even thinking. Learning the rifle movements required more skill than marching. After practicing column right, column left, and counter columns, we thought we would never make a mistake again. Each platoon was sure they would be the winners of a drill competition.
Everyone wanted to be a Hawkeye and hit all 40 targets during basic rifle marksmanship, but shooting the M16 rifle in full combat gear was tough. We fired 40 rounds from distances of 50 to 300 meters. 20 were fired from a foxhole and 20 from a prone position. To be classified as an expert, we had to hit between 36 to 40 targets. A sharpshooter hits between 30 and 35 targets, and if 23 to 29 targets were hit, we were a marksman. Breathe. Relax. Aim. Center mass. Then squeeze the trigger. Were terms that we had to remember to be successful. Once the qualification badges were given out, everyone knew that graduation was getting closer and that each part of the training was important. We now knew the value of good marksmanship. The night infiltration course was spectacular. The mission was to maneuver the 200 meter obstacle course with real explosions going off within five feet of us. Training at night was a new experience, and the overhead machine gun fire made us feel like we were in a real combat situation.
One of the most exciting events of our training was Victory Tower. 25 feet above the ground, we had to negotiate up a three-rope bridge, pull ourselves down a one-rope bridge, climb up again on a two-rope bridge, and then climb down a cargo net. Once we got a feel of the ropes, it wasn't too bad, and the safety nets took away a lot of the fear. Our drill sergeants demonstrated how to tie a Swiss seat. At the top of the tower, we had to swing across an opening 40 feet above the ground. It was a real challenge for all of us to repel the 40-foot wall. The tower taught us aggressiveness, confidence, and teamwork. It took all our concentration and strength to complete the event. The phrase, be all you can be, went through our minds many times. Duty, honor, country. A code of conduct and chivalry of those who guard this beloved land. An ideal so noble that it arouses a sense of pride, and yet humility. An expression of the ethics of the American man at arms. Duty, honor, country. Those three words build courage when courage seems to fail. Regain faith when there seems to be little cause for faith. Create hope when hope seems forlorn. The American man-at-arms, above all other people, prays for peace. For he must suffer and bear the deepest wounds and scars of war. Duty, honor, country. The unbelievers will say they are but words, a slogan or a flamboyant phrase. Every demagogue, every cynic, and every hypocrite will try to downgrade them to the extent of mockery and ridicule. The code with which those words perpetuate embraces the highest moral law and will stand the test of any ethics or philosophies ever published for the uplift of mankind. Around a thousand campfires, on a hundred battlefields, listening for the witching melody of faint bugles blowing revelry. Far off drums beating the long roll. This is the story of the American man at arms. His name and fame are the birthright of every American citizen. In his youth and strength, his love and loyalty, he gave all that mortality can give. He has never failed us. Were he to do so, a million ghosts in olive drab, 
in brown khaki, in blue and gray, would rise from their white crosses, thundering those magic words, duty, honor, country. Video-rama is part of the Morale, Welfare, and Recreation Division of Fort Jackson. All revenue received from this project and other MWR activities go toward improving the quality of life for all the soldiers at Fort Jackson and toward providing a community of excellence.